Hi, this is Alex again, this time with the uh, game um, Orcs vs. Rats uh, Skaven, played by uh, Maccabeo, uh, Vidal, and uh, Milo. Um, and before we really start this game, um, I want to talk a bit about kind of the meta game of, of actually playing Skaven. So um, I think you need to ask yourself, what do you really want to achieve? Like, what is your game plan when you want to win with Skaven, right? So in my point of view, there's two, two big things you can do with Skaven. So one is in your offense with four gutter runners, you have a lot of flexibility, so you can more or less score at will or kind of stay in your half and then say, I'm going to now score in two turns and then score, as long as you don't get too much bash down or, or pressured, um, especially against like pretty slow orcs. So um, I guess one game plan is trying to stall your own offense until turn eight and then kind of try to not let him through in your defense. On your defense, of course, you have a couple options. You can either um, try to get a deep kick and go in between the line of scrimmage and the ball carriers and try to apply pressure. Um, and then once that doesn't work, you can kind of go back and try to just um, off-screen defense without contact in order to kind of just make him make him walk forward slowly and then there's of course this Skaven mega play option where you just say well I'm just going to rely on dodging into a cage at some point of time doing the one dice or minus two dice uh, block against the ball carrier hope the ball bounces somewhere and then once it's free Skaven can recover and score quite easily um, of course, you can also go with this slightly lighter option, which means I'm always going to pressure the edge of the cage and then hope that they at some point of time roll too many, uh, have to roll too many dice to, to get their cage and can't advance because they always have to blitz the ball carrier and so on. And I think um, if we now go into the game, um, of course, what you want to do is always minimize your, your re-rolls uh, used. I mean, even if you have four re-rolls, um, one was, uh, I'm not, I mean, <laughs> you should not start your turn with a non-block block, right? Because, I mean, imagine this goes wrong. So is he going to do, he's going to go one, two, three, four, bam, one, two, three, four, five, six, dodge, dodge, and he's actually on the ball and can pick it up. So, I mean, I mean, you always have to ask yourself first, what's going to happen if something goes wrong? And the more important question is, are you going to use the reroll or not if this goes wrong? So what's going to happen if this guy rolls a both down, both down, right? You're going to reroll because if you don't, you're screwed. So what you do first, kind of use these ones which don't have any other function anyways, cover up the ball. So if the case this goes wrong, um, recover. And then another thing is, I always set up in a way that I can block these guys to the sideline. So if you start blocking with this guy, well, obviously this guy being then uh, a storm vermin or a blitzer, you can block diagonally. And if you only get the push, you get like another chance to block him and um, then without block. You might even set up that you can block with the block got the runner here um, as well. I also don't see any point in putting these got the runners here or at least this guy and this guy to the line of scrimmage because if he gets perfect defense he's just gonna put a, a black orc here and then what you're gonna do next turn dodge away. Uh, I mean, that that's just doesn't give you any benefit. You can just move him one back, this guy as well, this guy move him back, or moving in a way that you want to block him if you push this guy over here. Um, right, so what happens then? You do your blocks. Um, that's all fine. And <laughs> I mean, 
I have to say, I mean, when I said this, I, I, I hadn't, I had watched the replay, but I haven't realized that you've already used in a reroll here. But that's exactly what I meant, right? I mean, you do a block with a blockless guy, and you have your ball not covered at all. And, and I mean, especially if you're playing Skaven, you want to kind of save your rerolls for important actions, because that can make a big difference. Um, right, so getting this done, um, and then I mean, this play, I mean, <laughs> I mean, why would why would you ever make a play where you have to roll twice on a three plus if you can just pick it up with the gutter runner? I mean, this, this doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, it's not a league where you can gain star player points or anything. It's just, yeah. I mean, I'm happy if if you do these plays if you. If you want to play for fun, but if you're trying to win, then I mean, this just yeah does not make any sense at all. Anyway, um, so luckily it all went right. Um, then you blitz the black orc, which is fine. What I don't really see is. Uh, two things. So first of all, why this cut runner would dodge twice to get somewhere here? Uh, I mean, what's he gonna do here? Uh, and I mean, also this move here that you're gonna do afterwards, anyways. Why not do it before he dodges? Because he was still here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, okay, that doesn't work. But uh, just just in case. Um, if you're gonna do it anyway afterwards, why not do it before? Um, so, so I mean, look, I mean, he has a tackle blitzer here, right? So he puts in, I would just put in two assists, block this target, and 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 he's gone. Uh, <laughs> so, so I mean, such an easy target, and then this guy without block is exposed as well here. Um, I think you need to. Take a bit more care if you got the runners. So if I would play, probably he would not be able to blitz any of my got the runners in his first turn, and also not my leader thrower. Um, so it would be like one guy here, one guy here, and these guys here, one more guy here, like this guy, and then the back of the cage, the other two got the runners, to kind of uh, cart them to not expose them to be KO'd. I mean, I mean. You don't want to, I mean, if you want to score in two turns, what this kind of implies, then you should just go over the side or, or just focus on the center. But I mean, if he closes the sides that much like here, I mean, you just don't want to score in two turns. I mean, you have so much speed, you can focus over here and he has to regroup and then you can go over here. So, so there's no real use to, to score in two turns. And I mean, here, I guess it's, valid to either blitz with one guy, I mean, this guy might even assist and get a three dice block, because as an orc player, I don't really care when, if my Skaven score in two or three turns. Um, so here, of course, I mean, yeah, it's, it's always unfortunate to have a quad skull. Um, then again, um, if you would have set up your cage a bit like more in the back because there's no real need to get up here, it would have not mattered at all, uh, most likely. But again, if you have one got the runner down here, not helping at all here, and one down down the field, of course you kind of not have don't have enough people because these two guys would kind of cover that cage here uh, ideally. <coughs> So anyway, he, he gets then the the ball carrier down, and of course at this point uh, you're under pressure um, and and need to do something. Um, you do have the option to score, however, um, let's have a look again at at this at this turn. So he has guard. 
ES card, so I guess you don't get any two dice blocks really. Um, you only have this guy free, so yeah, obvious move is to block this guy away, so you get some uh, space here. Um, <clears throat> but then, uh, standing up with this guy, I also don't see it really, um, because uh, this is the tackler. Yeah, well, I guess um, too much pressure. So I guess it's it's okay to to just go for the score here. But I mean, again, so if something like that happens and you have this guy and this guy in your backfield, all you got to do is kind of just pick up the ball with two gutter runners and the linemen, cage down one one and one here. And, and then you're set up for the next turn and you get more possibilities again. You can walk back and forth. They can't trace you except with the blitzers. And, and even then they're not fast enough. And even if they might get the, the dice, uh, the ball free ones, they still have to pick it up. You can still pick it up on a three in a tackle zone, run away again. So, yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of... Uh, possibilities to, to not get so stressed stressed out um, so luckily this works uh, you get the score but still you can have to score in your third turn uh, which of course shouldn't be your game plan uh, I mean there's a there's a point to, to score in in, a, in not in turn 8 so you might want to say well I mean I want to score in turn 5 which gives the orcs only 4 turns so they have to risk a bit to do the tie, and I want to use that um, to actually then go up to zero, so I can actually go for the win, because if you just go for the turn eight score, and then they just bash themselves through and say, I'm fine with a tie, gonna go for the turn eight score as well, then you only have to chance to maybe one turn, but usually if they get the touchdown in eight turns, you don't have many players left for a one turn touchdown that gets kind of hard um, so yeah I mean a chance to to score in turn maybe five maybe even six um, to to break them um, right here I think it's a very good setup to keep the blitzers in the back and actually uh, because the worst thing that can happen against Kevin is a blitz and if you have these guys here and you can even manage a blitz properly and uh, that for sure uh, yeah so, something something good and what I don't like here is that you have your guard players right behind the ones who get blocked because the black cork will block them and you will just have your guard player like in a tackle zone for no reason you're not going to be able to block that black cork away because he's just going to follow up with another guy and then you don't have any guarders to get the assists so I would just, these guys, I mean, put them one more back. I mean, anyway, I mean, he can have quick snap and then all these guys are, like, he gets, like, one, two, three, four, five, six. He gets, like, six instead of three blocks plus a blitz, even on a gutter runner. So definitely these guys need to move one more back. I mean, yes, you can argue, well, I mean, I want to put more pressure and be able to put, go more offensive with, with the gutter runner. Uh, potentially but I don't think that one field makes it or justifies to to have these guys in a tackle zone just because of the blocks uh, really doubt it so because now we see what happens so next turn so we get this turn and and, and now we see him I mean you have these guys all now in the tackle zone and you cannot move your guarders where you want them in order to actually block one of these black orcs. So you, you don't get these guys away. You have this one closed. You don't have a guarder free on a proper space like here and here in order to, to get in here and do a proper two dice blitz on this guy if you want to break through. or So, so yeah, I mean, already now you're under pressure for completely no reason. So what you then do, um, 
you opt for, for the one nice option here to kind of put some pressure on. Um, yeah, but the problem is even if you put this pressure on here, right, and it works, you have the three plus, you do some uh, uh, action with with the uh, with the cutter runner. I don't know what this guy's doing here. So either he's going like here to really help on the pressure, putting on pressure. But like here is like so far away. I mean, what's this guy gonna do next turn? Like he has no no clue. Why why would he not be here or at least here? I mean, here I could say okay, you can push him into the black court, but anything else I, I don't really see I mean even I mean you now spent all this risk to to get over to this side but the problem is I mean he can just I mean easily I mean of course uh, he, easily he can then just I mean he can walk here 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 without doing any blocking any go for it he can easily set up his cage right so then my opinion is not even worth to to risk this and break through i would just focus on kind of reducing his blocks next turn um and and getting your blocks in and yeah i mean unfortunately you do discover it uh, well not that you do it i mean it's fine to try to get this uh, uh this this splits uh this this block in but even that, I mean, it's then the one dice block you can do with this carder. And you have all your guys in a tackle zone here. So it just doesn't just justify. I mean, you rather don't move this guy and this guy. And I'd rather just dodge away with, with, with the carder. Dodge away with this guy and this guy just moved here. So you'd only have these two guys left. Maybe one if the dodge the first dodge fails and 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 you have your players flexible for the next turn like this like half your players are either going to be between black corks with guard or they're going to be on the ground and and then it gets really hard to put on some pressure because you don't have any flexibility anymore <clears throat> so you go for it um of course not using the reroll is the right option not sure whether you actually I've already used the reroll here in this turn. Um, yeah, I think not. Um, but yeah, I mean, anyways, as said, I, mean, I don't think it justifies for a two dice block. Yes, maybe for a one dice block. I would just not do it. Dodge away, and you have your card player. I mean, even if, like if you dodge here, right? I mean, or here. I mean, even if you fail the dodge, you still have four movement afterwards that you can walk that with your guarder to the right place to get the two dice next turn even if you fail the dodge so so there's so much value not to have this guy like next to a black orc after your turn i mean of course he can then still put the guy next to him but that's then another guy he has to kind of put there and that's one less guy he can use for the cage <clears throat> so he opts to go over this side obviously because everything is free I mean here uh, you might argue um, to close the cage first because I always do the non-blocking options first we saw before there are uh, possibilities for quad skulls um, but yeah uh, not such a big issue of course um, and then you see you get all these blocks done of course always a bit arguable whether you want to block the garter or take the chance to block the gutter under but i think it's fine to control the garters because if you win the block war then that's a, a big advantage for for black corks so again if you see in here now so this guy you had to also torch away three plus first to even get the right a uh, block to get something and <clears throat> already now you have your, your players stood up or bound over here and this side over here is like wide open wide open everywhere so uh then of course you do the right thing going over here but again i mean this move definitely is not worth to, to have your cutter runner down here 
completely out of the game just to get this guy, sorry, a, a two dice block. So, I mean, either you choose guy in the row with the cut turn row here and use this guy and say, well, I mean, I'm just going to risk the one dice um, or even touch away one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, and you have him available or even here, have him available next turn to assist, to walk there and so on. If the block fails, uh, the dodge fails, yeah, that happens. But I don't think it's, it's justified to put the gut runner here. Um, so then, because in the next turn, when you have a nice cage here and you guys here, you already have three out by now. It's almost impossible to stop this. Then you have to kind of start from here to do some miraculous uh, Skaven turn. Um, and, and you're now on the wrong side of, of the game, right? So if you're like over here and I mean here also you then do this one dice, yeah, okay, I mean, I guess that's fine. Um, you could have also opted to just stand here and and with the garter, one, two, three, four, go, yeah, uh, that wouldn't have been enough, right? So yeah, that's fine. But I mean, imagine this guy here, right, would have been here now. You could have easily moved him up here as well and done a two dice block now instead of a one dice uh, without any dodging or, or go for it. Um, so yeah, it's fine to stand next to the ball carry, of course. And then now you kind of come back and, and realize, well, you need to somehow screen here, but, but it's it's already too late. He got already too many blocks. So, I mean, by now he already has 21 blocks over your 10 in six turns. I mean, 21 blocks against armor seven usually ends up in two KOs and, and, and two casualties. I mean, that's just about average, I would say. Um, so then now you can start doing what, what I suggested before, well actually not really, you, you're going to opt to get this play out of position and this guy to block here to get a one dice against armor 9, where if you could have just kind of kept this guy here, dodged away, tried to screen, um, which I think is, is, is more useful. Because now you you don't really have a a proper screen. Of course, dodge fails happen, um, and you can't you know like always dodge away four guys. Of course, sometimes you have to pick your your fight and and your uh, your fight and, and your one dice blocks that you want to do but uh, not from the very beginning so here quite an easy uh, to um, cage opportunity and now I mean from the orc point of view yeah, I mean you want to try to get as many blocks on these gutter runners you want to control the garters um, and then just hope that you have here enough garters on the the cage that you don't give away any uh, any blocks um, like this I mean good idea well I mean I I would have I mean just going back here so at this point so he has only one turn left right I would have just gone for a one two three four bam six plus dodge try to one dice uh, one dice even with the storm worming to this guy or put the gutter runner here and block this guy here and kind of have him uh, blitz without block but he has two two black orcs here so that wouldn't help either so maybe just try to dodge in here on the six and, and get something done at least hope he can pick it up and, I mean again that's like all uh, Last action. So I guess you want to dodge through here and then do the minus two dash from this side with, with the 
got the runner, which is fine. But I mean, the main point of, of this half is, I mean, you can always have a, a little bit better or worse odds to to do this one five plus minus two dice. I'm gonna dodge in the cage scaven play, but the whole idea of the scaven game is that you don't have to do that. Only like if everything goes south, then you have to do that. But normally, uh, you can just kind of screen him off and make him roll the dice, make him do the three plus dodges to close the cage, Ma make him have to do a, a, a blitz on a gut runner where he needs the pow to to actually advance his cage and and, and things like that. Which which order in the 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 annoying things um, for him. So then here in the second half, um, yeah, the, let's just go back quickly. Um, yeah, they said better. I still don't get why they should not move up one field. Um, also, you're kind of exposing, well, your players a bit. It's still in the range of a black orb with block to block blitz there. Even that got the runner directly to dice, so I don't see it. I mean, what I usually do is I then put the guarder here, the guarder here, and, and then the, the blotcher or the wrestler got the runner here, and I hide the other two behind them so they can't get blocked, because in the first turn, then you anyway get the chance to, to run through. So here, um, it's 1-1. One, one. There's a big gap between the two lines. So definitely here the idea should be to go to go through um, and try to put some pressure on. However, with the black box and so on, he has quite a good uh, a good screen. So I'd probably go and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then blitz this guy with this guarder. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven or seven, eight. Even you can even and try to do this one go for it so you get that block or at least get the block on the black orc as well to open up the room for the three gutter runners to go like one frame bam bam with this guy here put the pressure and it's not so he can move six right so he needs to put his cage somewhere here right and if you get the gutter runner somewhere here then at least he has to kind of bring a gutter runner down um, in order to make a secure cage and and, and uh, he has to uh, uh, commit a bit uh, to this and and still your gut runners are not in real risk because I mean there are four gut runners here you can only blitz one um, and if he makes any mistake next turn like any fail then it's touchdown and, and you're up to one so definitely here it's worth to go deep um, Let's have a look again. I don't remember. I mean, this is fine. Put this guy here. This is fine. Go deep with this guy. Um, even the yeah, worth to do the go for it, I would say, uh, if you can actually put in contact. Then the blitzing on this side, yeah, is fine. I don't really think it's worth to dodge here in two tackle zones just to get through because. Um, let me see, so, yeah, you can get a second, well, yeah, okay, I mean, yeah, I, I could see that, you get a second tackle zone on the ball carrier, he has to either blitz away or dodge away, so, yes, I, 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 can, I can see the point for that. Uh, I do think, though, if you would have blitzed this guy, he should have been able to run with both got the runners with the three plus to do the same thing um maybe so yeah i mean anyway points the same put on pressure on the ball if you can um but the difference is maybe do you want to really put that much pressure on the ball now or do you just want to get in between lines and then put more pressure on the ball next turn but I think if you can get two gutter runners on the ball, that, that's that's a good option. It even justifies here dodging four plus, but as I understand, this is actually dodging twice four plus because from here to here and through even. 
So I mean, just even touching here is like four plus three plus two plus. You get the same, the same, but on a four plus three plus two plus instead of a four plus four plus two plus. A uh, small thing, but sometimes it looks uh, more scary than than you think. Another possibility would have been to just kind of get the guard guy over here uh, and then one nice this first, who knows. Right, so anyway, um, then once this fails, he can obviously move his cage um, and just kind of start camping forward and uh, <coughs> getting there. Um, yeah, like that, put pressure, put some guy against the ball, and now here, it's, I think it's fine to go all in and put on as much pressure as you can. I think if you go all in, go all in and put everybody in, um, so that's fine. Instead of kind of just saying, oh, I'm just going to kind of put one guy here, but I'm still going to do the other defense, you need to kind of pick that one turn where you just throw everything at them and just hope that you don't die and he doesn't escape <laughs> in this turn. And uh, so let's see what happens. The escape uh, kind of works. He gets a way through. He can uh, actually escape. Um, so uh, well played from the orcs. And I think at this point, yeah, you just have to kind of <coughs> retreat <coughs> so retreat I mean I mean put everybody back here and I don't see why why you would dodge with this guy in here really um what you want to do is kind of put everybody back and just stop the orcs advancing and try to get more pressure that way and you still do have like three six seven eight players which yeah, it's not yet like totally necessary to uh, to do the, the Nazi place. So, yeah. um, so you end up with having this guy here. For I still don't understand the reason because you could have this guy now here and and got the runner somewhere safe. So, quite a nice screen, but this guy I don't understand. So he advances. Um, and then, of course, again here, I mean, try to not, I mean, I would never try to 3 plus dodge on this occasion, so probably uh, dodge away with this guy, and then block with the wrestler on the tackler guy, and then block with this guy to screen here, and then at the end maybe block this guy, or depending on what it is, um, starting with the guard, uh, with 3 plus dodge is a bit risky um, then I, I don't yeah I, mean, I just don't I don't see these plays you know 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus assist and then again here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 go go get the one dice yeah yeah, I mean, yeah, not sure. I mean, probably might be plus, might be okay. I mean, honestly, I don't see why why the orcs wouldn't do a better cage here. I mean, you don't have any rush. Why not just cage here? It is a fairly good chance to three plus three plus somewhere here to get the assist. So I think it's a yeah I think it's fine to take this. However, I'm not sure whether starting with the card or just the right way to go. Well, I guess if you don't use the reroll, then you can go through. If you use the reroll, then you're just gonna block this guy and go through. <coughs> That's fine. That's fine. Um, and also because. I mean, if you can get the ball popped here and it goes like in one of these three fields, you still have this guy who can recover, pass, catch, and, and you're, you're gone. 
Um, so probably the best opportunity here to, to go for the steal, that's fine. Um, I have to say, I mean, sometimes I am a bit too conservative as well, kind of not thinking or not wanting to do these plays and rather kind of screening and, and play the more safe ways where sometimes I guess the reward can be quite high to just go in and try it, especially here when you get a one dice on the ball carrier. Uh, that's That's a pretty good option. Anyway, I mean, it fails, and, and then it's basically, yeah, it's basically over. You don't have to, the manpower anymore. And of course, you could then always throw everything at the ball carrier somehow. And then, as we'll see in the last turn, uh, surprisingly, you actually then get this the ball carrier down. Um, I mean, maybe... Just to see, I mean, could this have been prevented, right? Um, we're standing here now. Um, all the got the runners are on the ground. So the main thing is getting this guy down, getting uh, guards from all the edges if possible. You have one, two, three. I mean, and then you could even get like a five-man cage going so he gets a minus three dice block uh, or at least has to dodge on a on a six plus uh, maybe but uh, yeah of course but, uh, I think it might be worth to to, to think about uh, one additional guy here or here just so he kind of has to to do that six plus dodge um, to get in there. I mean, it doesn't cost you much. Um, and it is a bit harder to roll a 6 than a 5, to be honest. But uh, yeah, nothing to blame, I guess. And then not picking it up is, of course, unfortunate. And here, of course, as already mentioned, uh, not picking it up is the right choice then. <laughs> and make sure it doesn't bounce into this guy's arms and, and scores because of course if you had this guy one further and maybe that's another thing uh, to think about right uh this guy here which you move over here right i mean this guy needs to go in scoring range because i mean whatever happens in his next turn if he doesn't score you can still score, and this guy doesn't add any value to prevent that that move you did afterwards because he just walks down here. So I mean, this guy needs to go in the range first because he can without like any trouble. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, even just or just in range of go for it, or just in range without go for it, whichever this is better because he cannot mark him without coverage which you won't do so just to have the option and then it would be worth to uh, if this guy's here to actually try to I don't know dodge dot somehow one two three four five six go for it long bomb yeah anyway um rather lucky tie and, and i think yeah you can say i mean all my guys are out but if you look at the statistics and how the game went i mean you have 60 to 17 blocks and i mean that that's just a huge a huge outnumbering amount and uh and it comes it starts like at the very beginning right i mean you you're not you don't have really a game plan what to do in your offense in order to be able to to force the, or to 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 have the flexibility depending on how your cash go ko's or not whether you want to score on turn five or six or eight and that's i think the the idea that you can so what, what my game plan is usually if i can if I can stay in, in my offense without getting too many casualties and being able to keep the rerolls, not using the rerolls, and I still have like three rerolls in turn five, 
I might be opted to score, even though if I can stall, I usually like to stall to terminate. And then, uh, and of course, that's then you that is controlling the clock and controlling what's going on. I mean, if you score in turn two or three, that's the best that can happen to the orcs because then they have like all the time uh, to just bash you to the ground and get that 60 blocks up running. Um, so yeah, um, also this game was without the Red Ogre, so it's a, a little bit different, but even with the Red Ogre, I mean, your offense can then be safe to cage, once you have the cage saved, target a blitz target with the Red Ogre, try to get the casualty advantage, um, and then it even gets easier to stop them in their half once you've uh, kind of done your your turn eight score. Um, right, uh, a bit a longer video. I hope um, it has helped um, to analyze and, and think a bit more about what your game plan is over the whole 16 turns and not just for every turn. How do I pop the ball the best way? And um, but actually think of one or two more turns. Where do I want my guys to be? in order to have a better position to pop the ball maybe in two or three turns later. All right.